Hey y'all, welcome to this week's studio vlog. If you are new here, my name is Reina and I'm a graphic designer and Etsy shop owner. Make sure you check out more of my work on my Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. So for today's video, I wanted to go ahead and share the significance behind some of the sticker designs that I make. I think it'd be helpful to give some insight uh, behind my thought process and maybe even a backstory of why I chose those elements. I also wanted to talk about the importance of indigenous artists in physical spaces like museums, art walks, and anything in between. We do have quite a bit of work to get through today. I ran out of thank you cards and I need to have at least 50 thank you cards ready. So hopefully I can get that done in the next hour. If not, that's okay. As always, I'm gonna add a work time lapse so we can get some work done together. Again, thank you so much for being here. Let's jump into it. So these are the thank you cards I need to cut. The way I do my thank you cards for cost effective purposes is I put as many thank you cards in one eight and a half by 11 sheet. That way I can save on printing costs, paper costs, and all I gotta do is cut these out. So these are, so let me go ahead and show it all better. So this is kind of how it looks. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I like to make different designs. Uh, that way it increases the chances of returning buyers to get different thank you cards. And I think that's pretty cute. Uh, the note is the same. It's really important for small shops to create ways to save money and um, be cost effective, but also not lose any of the quality of the work. All right, so we are done with the thank you cards. I did about 45 of them. Front and back, this one front and back. This one's so cool. So I think I'm set for the day. Um, let's get some work done right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some packaging done. I hope you all enjoy. After packaging all these orders, I think we should jump into the significance behind some of the stickers that I make. Okay, so one of the first stickers is the Epazote sticker. So this is obviously inspired by the Epazote plant and um, honestly, I didn't like Epazote growing up. I actually, I felt like the smell was too strong and like whenever people would put on food, I'd be like, like why do they have to put Epazote? <laughs> I think the first time I ever, I guess, tasted a pasote was in Oaxaca. And being in Oaxaca going to El Mercado, I would always ask for my quesadillas without a pasote. But for some reason, when I grew older, it kind of grew on me. And um, I remember I didn't start liking it until I came back to the States. And I don't know like what, like I guess my mom had made some quesadillas. I'm like, dang, el pasote gives the quesadilla flavor. Like, o sea, sin el pasote, la quesadilla sabe como muy simple. O sea, saboreas la pura sal del quesillo. And then like the pasote, like, I don't know, it just like ties everything together. It's like not a minty taste, but 
it's like a fresh taste because I don't like mint on my shit. I don't like mint like on chocolate and I don't like mint like on food usually. <laughs> I'm like like on spring rolls. Um, but if I saw this like it's like a step lower than mint. So it makes it like taste good. And I'm like, dang, like I've been missing out. Like, why didn't I like it before? But yeah, um, so El Pasote like holds a really special place in my heart because, you know, I obviously didn't give it a chance, give it a chance before. And when I tried it, obviously I couldn't go back because I'm like, yeah, quesadillas do not taste good without El Pasote. All right, the next one I want to talk about is the Flor de Calabaza. Now the flor de calabaza is super cute, like, just period. O sea, la flor sola está super bonita. Okay, uh, real talk, like being 100% honest, I have had flor de calabaza probably max twice. I know, that's not a lot. And it's the same like thing where it's like, I don't know, like no me, sa no me sabe a nada. And granted, those two times were years ago when I lived in Oaxaca, so I don't know, like, I guess cuando lo comía, like, no me sabía nada. So, I'm just like, I feel like now that I appreciate flavors a lot more, I think I'm gonna give Flor de Calabaza a try soon. And I'll show y'all where I go and where I go get the, either una empanada de Flor de Calabaza o algo, pero, o sea, de que lo probamos, lo probamos otra vez. Okay, the next sticker I want to talk about is the Oaxacali sticker. So this sticker, um, I think is really significant because it like pretty much says a lot by just showing it. Um, it honestly emphasizes the really strong connection we have between Oaxaca and California. So something that I think is really cool is that when a lot of Oaxaqueños migrate, they not only bring their culture, languages, and traditions, which is already a lot, from point A to point B, but they also bring like los sistemas comunales, meaning the way the villages operate and how we stay connected as a community. Is it perfect? Obviously not. There are mishaps between people who don't agree with things, but nonetheless, that effort to still be connected as a community is still there. And I believe that this strong connection and community with Oaxaqueños is our really old tradition called Galgaz. So Galgaz adapted into Spanish is Gelaguetza. And Gelaguetza basically kind of means I'll do this for you and I, or I'll help you in this way because I know that whenever I need it, you're gonna do the same for me. And that, you know, back in the day could have been um, trading like un almud de maíz or that could have been me letting somebody borrow like two mules to, um, help somebody else carry leña or whatever so like in modern times it's it can be something like i remember that one of my aunts was having a party years ago and asked my mom hey can you do galagueta for me uh can you provide the taquero and um whenever you have a party i'll do the same thing so my mom got the taquero for her party and um when we had a party i forgot for what but um she got the taquero for us so you know it's like that like same like uh, I guess mutual aid, mutual help. So it's really cool, you know, that um, we still practice these things. It is a lot of work to maintain. I didn't realize how hard it was to be in constant communication with your family members until you got older because it's like visiting, it's calling, it's texting, it's being in constant communication to make sure y'all are good. You know what I'm saying? Is it worth it? I believe so because you always know that you have that community with you, that you, those family members are always gonna be there for you if you really need it. And of course, this doesn't mean to keep your toxic family members or community members around. Yeah, that's not the case. Something I also wanted to talk about is that I think it's so cool that I have been meeting so many cultural artists and connecting with them because I like, cannot stress this enough, but us being on social media shouldn't be a competition of like who sells more who has more followers and we're creating art in the ways that we see it so you know i create a lot of my art in how i view the world and how i grew up and what is dear to me things that i have been exposed to and things that i've lived of course another cultural artist is going to go ahead and draw or paint the way that they see the world what they're exposed to and somebody who i admire so much for doing this is mi amiga Michelle. She does this really cool fusion of like Oaxacan and Pokemon. 
confusion and it's like crazy like i would have never thought about that and um it's so cute how like she's drawn pikachu con una bola de quesillo or pikachu cargando la calenda and i'm like that is so freaking cool you know what i'm saying because she's clearly more into pokemon than i was as a kid and for her to fuse like that kind of like identity with her cultural identity is a really cool way to express who you are. I just think it's really important that cultural artists are taking it into their own hands to show the world how they view their own culture. I think that's super important because for instance, these white people making like all these Disney movies or all just these DreamWorks, whatever. Don't get me started on Apocalypto. And they depict us in a way that they see us. They see us as, as primitive. It's like, little creatures just running around these rituals blah blah and it's like they do not like even understand the surface of the meaning of these things so i think i'm saying this a lot i think it's so important that cultural artists are speaking for themselves now and for their community and you know that ties into physical spaces it's like why don't we have like museums with like art from indigenous people. <laughs> I feel like, you know, being an art student, um, taking all these art classes, art 113, art 112, history or art, modern art, renaissance art, it's always white, 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 white. It's like, I feel like a lot of these museums are quite frankly outdated. I don't even go to museums anymore because all I'm gonna see is white people painted by white people. Um, of course, now there are exceptions where it's like, I've been to museums where it like, where a lot of art shows are being more focused on people of color. So that is amazing. I do want to dive into this, but I honestly get so like tired of talking about this. When was the last time I went to a museum and I felt like, dang, this was so cool. Oh, and you know, what's the crazy part. Even when the art is ancestral, like for instance, in Montalban, they have this museum, right? Where you go into the museum first and then you're able to go to the um to las piramides or las ruinas but then again it's like all these artifacts are curated and and interpreted by white or non-indigenous people and that shit is just like oh my god like it just feels like it's like this never ending battle of like, when do we get to show ourselves for who we are and without having somebody else feel like they have authority to speak over our identities. So yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to think about, but I think it's important that these things are happening and I'm just so proud of every cultural artist that I see. And I also can't wait to see artists of color have more shows and more um work at museums i feel like i talked a lot and i probably did but um just a lot to say and i feel like i couldn't even fit it in this video so let me go ahead and take a break regroup myself and um i'll come back with y'all in a little bit all right the tanto hablar me dieron ganas de un cafecito um I'm trying not to go to Starbucks anymore or Coffee Bean because, you know, money. So I'm, I've been making my coffee at home and my little sister got this electric whisk and oh my god, it is the freaking coolest thing ever. Like, I can make the foam que le ponen in Starbucks at my house now. If you don't have one of these, like, just look at that. If you don't have one of these, you should totally get it. Um, my little sister got it on Amazon and it was like 12 bucks. And look at my coffee, it's so smooth and creamy. The end result is a bomb and delicious iced coffee. All right, y'all, that's it for this week's studio vlog. I really hope y'all enjoyed it. I do think we tackled a lot of important topics, so if you stuck around, thank you so much. I am definitely trying to make these videos a weekly thing. Again, thank you so much for being here and I'll see y'all next time.